today I'm going to exchange a switch on this mechanical keyboard here. The keyboard is a Rapu V700 with mechanical keys from the manufacturer Kale. One of those keys broke when something fell on it. Since then, the key cannot longer be used. So I ordered replacement switches. There's an order link in the video description. The key color indicates the pressure level, so always order the same color that you have. In this particular case, however, the production of the yellow keys has been discontinued, so I'm resorting to the red ones, which have the same amount of pressure. You can easily check the amount of pressure and corresponding color online. There's also a link in the description below. Some Kyle buttons have LEDs built in. These then have four solder points. In this case, these are standard buttons without LEDs, and they have only two solder points, which makes this repair quite easier. The solder points also hold the key switch down to the keyboard. So as soon as you free up these points, the button is removable. To get to the solder joints, the plastic panel must be removed. For this, I loosen the Phillips screws on the back. Some of the screws are under the rubber feet. When all screws are loosened, the panel can be removed. The actual keyboard plate is made of metal and fastened with screws from the inside to the back panel. So I loosen these up too. and then the board can be turned over to get to the soldering points. In this case, the soldering points of the defective button can easily be determined because the button is located on the edge of the board. Otherwise, the keys must be counted exactly so you get to the one that you need to be replacing. I mark the points to be loosened with a marker. I use a simple soldering iron to liquefy the solder. Unfortunately, my desoldering pump has recently broken, so I have to push the button out while liquefying the tin. I press on this black part of the button and loosen both points one after the other until the switch falls out. This was actually pretty easy. Now the new switch can already be put in. Since I have not removed the old tin, I'll just reuse the old stuff. I put the switch right on the holes and heat the solder up while I press on the switch. Again, I have to solder back and forth a few times, but this method works perfectly fine for keys with two contacts even without the desoldering pump. As soon as the new switch sits tightly, I plug the keyboard in and see if the button works properly. And it works, so the keyboard can be reassembled. Anyone who has a screwdriver and a small soldering iron can do this repair easily at home. And I would recommend a soldering pump, which is available online for a few dollars. There are links below in the video description for all the products I used. I hope this video helps save money and repair your keyboard. 
On my channel, there are more helpful videos. I appreciate all your comments and thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and see you soon.